Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will take a closer look at ATX 12 VO and check what the current status is. I talked to PSU manufacturers, also mainboard manufacturers regarding ATX 12 VO 12 volt only if they are planning new products and if this eventually will make it to the consumer market. ATX 12 O standard was already introduced to the market in 2019 by Intel, but it made like its big way through the news and through the YouTube world in like uh, 2020. So I wanted to check one year later, what is the current status? Seasonic, the heart of your system. As I said before, ATX 12VO was already introduced in 2019 by Intel and don't be worried that it was introduced by Intel, that's nothing special. Already the previous ATX standard, which was introduced like 1996, was also introduced by Intel. That is nothing unusual and also nothing special, also nothing to worry about. You can still find the ATX standard on AMD boards. That's nothing to worry about because I read that in some comments. Don't worry about that effect. But ATX 12VO, 12 volt only means that those new PSUs like this one will only deliver 12 volt to the main board while typical ATX PSUs also deliver 5 volt and 3.3 volt to your main board. 5 volt and 3.3 volt are absolutely essential voltages and there is no way that your PC will work without these. 5 volt is required for all kind of ICs, might it be ne network controller, sound controller, like your VRM controller, all of those ICs, they typically require 5 volt to run as operating voltage, some of them also require 3.3 volt is also more essential a part of the PCI Express specification, so it's required for your graphics card, also for M.2 devices, for example, your M.2 SSD will also require 3.3 volt and also a bunch of BIOS chips are running on 3.3 volts. So those voltages are absolutely essential on a PC and it's not like you can just leave it away. So you might ask like, why would you even do that then? The origin for these type of standards is usually more like uh, pre-built PCs like from Medion or Dell not something you would build yourself at home. Because if you're building a PC at home, nobody cares or nobody can enforce you to follow some certain standards, some certain efficiency requirements or whatever. But if Dell, for example, is selling an entire PC, which is like an electronic device, then there are specific requirements, for example, from the EU or from the US standards they have to follow. And especially in the US, it's getting tougher and tougher, but it also makes sense that your electrical devices require less power in idle. And that's especially what 12VO can achieve. Percentage-wise speaking, it's quite a huge difference, but just looking at the numbers, it seems quite low. Like comparing an ATX 12VO versus an ATX PSU on the same uh, mainboard, same CPU, whatever, you can probably save in idle maybe three, four, five, six watt. But that's in percentage speaking like 30, 40, 50 percent, which is definitely a lot. Especially if you consider that you have, I don't know, like a million pre-built PCs out there per year. And if you can save like three, four watt on a million PCs a year, that's definitely doing something for the environment. So it's definitely not a stupid standard. But what it's essentially doing is you're moving the 12 volt to 3.3 and 5 volt DC-DC conversion from the PSU to your mainboard. So it's already sitting closer to your electrical circuits on your mainboard, which require 3.3 and 5 volt, which is already helping the efficiency, but it's also more efficient to have those DC-DC conversion directly on the mainboard itself. All right, so Intel sent this ASRock C 490 board to me, which is already following the ATX 12VO standard, which you can see right here because the big 24 pin connector is missing. Also, I got this PSU, which has this 10 pin connector for ATX 12VO. That is pretty much the biggest change to the standard ATX PSU. And those are the new connectors we, which are required for ATX 12VO. So you have this 10 pin connector. And in addition, you could have six pin connectors, which are essentially the same as on every graphics card, but that's nothing unusual. This board also already had this type of connectors up here. There was a huge row, additional six pin and eight pin connectors for more power. So it could very well be if it's like a HEDT main board that they maybe pack an additional six pin right here next to it, for example. So that is the biggest change when it just comes to the connector. And I think just for case design, this is already quite nice. I was never a big fan of the 24 pin connector. It's just very beefy and yeah, the 10 pin comes in more handy for sure. So that is the biggest uh, change. 
the 8-pin EPS for CPU power consumption or CPU power delivery, that is still the same. But what changes is this area right here. So everything you can see up on top right here, all those like ICs and uh, inductors and capacitors, this is for 5 volt DC-DC conversion. And this right here is 3.3 volt DC-DC conversion because this is now moved to the main board. Like this is just additional area which is required by the ATX12VO standard. So there is definitely more space required on the motherboard. Looking at the cables from the PSU, as I said before, everything is 12 volt now, which also means that your Molex and SATA connectors are a little bit different. So you can still have Molex coming directly from the PSU, but it's only utilizing half of the cables which you can see. So it's only utilizing ground in the middle and 12 volt on the right. Usually you would always have also 5 volt next to it. And for the SATA connector right here, it's also only taking 12 volt. While on a typical SATA connector, actually this one right here, you can see it more clearly. You also have the yellow cable and the red cable. The yellow cable should be 3.3 volt and the red cable should be 5 volt, which is required by the normal uh, SATA standard. So if you're following the normal SATA standard and for example you want to power a hard drive which might require 5 volt and 3.3 volt, you have to plug this into your mainboard. So there's this additional tiny 4-pin connector that plugs in right here. So that is pretty much like a PSU part. This is a voltage output while those are inputs. Those are the outputs for 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt and ground. So those, that's why you have four pins here. If you look at this the first time, you might get the impression that that is a pretty useless standard. That's at least when I looked at it the first time, I thought like, that is really unnecessary. I can just stick to the previous ATX specs, but on a technical standard, it kind of makes sense to uh, improve the ATX um, specs just to improve efficiency and also save energy. Makes sense to me. And there's also not much which is like a negative point, but we will talk about that in a second. So I asked Seasonic, Corsair, Asus, MSI Gigabyte what, they, what their current plans are for ATX12VO. The first reply was from Seasonic and they already confirmed to me that they already finished development of the Focus GX 650 watt PSU. And they already sent it to Intel for certification. And if this PSU passes certification, which is expected, then they will continue with mass production and also continue with mass production of different PSU sizes. So maybe like 550, 750, 850 watts. Not really sure, but that's what they told me. Also Corsair confirmed that they're working on those PSUs and they expect to have available consumer PSUs early 2022, which means they're probably in the same stage as Seasonic, probably sent their prototypes to Intel for certification and then starting with mass production very soon. At least that's what I'm personally expecting. It seems to be a bit more difficult to get reliable information on the mainboard side. I first asked Gigabyte, but they told me at this time they cannot give me any information or they didn't want to give me any information. That's very hard to tell. I'm still waiting on a reply from MSI right now. If I still get it in time, I will include it at this point. If you didn't see anything, I'm still missing the reply. Asus at least could tell me that they already finished development of an internal prototype, which is using ATX12VO but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're also working on a consumer motherboard. But yeah, it's kind of difficult because you probably need both components at the same time. I mean, it's very good that we know that the PSU manufacturers are already working on it and they will have availability probably early 2022. But at the same time, we will probably also need mainboards which are following the standard because if there is nobody buying the PSUs, they will probably cancel this. And for example, like this one, I mean, this was available for purchase in Germany, but there is no PSU to use it. So it didn't really make much sense. And probably, I don't know, Astrox sold, sold like two boards of these, I guess. And they were sold to Intel probably. Looking at ATX 12VO the first time, it seemed a little bit unnecessary to me. At least that was my personal first impression. I just thought, so they just changed 24 pin to 10 pin and moved 3.3 and 5 volt to the main board. I mean, is that even necessary? But just looking at this from a neutral standpoint, it kind of makes sense if there is a million PCs, for example, per year, which have an increased efficiency. And especially if you're in idle and you're running those ATX 12 VO PSUs, which have higher efficiency standards, then they can definitely save some energy and have a positive effect for the environment. So 
fair point for the ATX 12 VO standard. But then at the same time, everybody of us is required to buy new PSUs, which is also a negative aspect. Also, it will require more space on the main boards. So if you're moving 3.3 and 5 volts to your main board, I mean, the PSU size is the same. You don't see that 3.3 and 5 volt is missing out of this PSU, but you can definitely see that the size on the main board increased, which is a negative thing, especially talking about micro ATX, mini ITX, it will have a negative impact on those boards, I assume, if they will follow ATX 12 VO, we will see. Also, it will require probably a more complex cable management because now you don't only have input to the main board when it comes to the current, you also have output for your peripherals. And talking about, about the peripherals, you will be limited to your mainboard itself and not to your PSU. So for example, if you want to run 20 HDDs off this mainboard and this mainboard is not designed for it, you will not have sufficient amount of those tiny four pin connectors to run those peripherals. But at the same time, it's very unlikely that you're doing that. And typically, for example, on this board, you know, you have two SATA connectors and probably your maximum using two SATA drives, then you can design your main board, output cables, whatever, accordingly. So that will probably not be a huge issue. Like the size on the PCB required for 3.3 and 5 volt DC-DC conversion could be a problem on the smaller boards. All right, will be quite interesting to see if this will make it or how it will make it to the consumer market because it will definitely come to the consumer market now that we know that the PSU manufacturers are already working on consumer PSUs, which makes sense because previously, like you could buy the board, but you didn't have a PSU. That didn't make much sense. Maybe let me know what you think about this in general. Um, I guess next week when there is like the online Computex, we will probably see new PSUs, maybe with ATX 12 VO. And for main boards, I guess it will take until Intel all the lake or maybe even later. We will see. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.